Hey guys and welcome back for another video. Uh, today we're going to be doing something a little bit different than we normally do. Rather than a guide on anything in the game, I'm going to attempt to show you guys how to play this game with a controller if that's something you desire to do. I'm not saying that playing all aspects of the game with a controller is a good idea, but if you're more of a console player and you want to just get some footing in the game, here you go, here's a guide. I got the idea for this because I've had a few friends ask me how to play the game this way, and with the addition of the action camera, I was honestly curious if it was easier than when I had initially tried this a few years ago. Anyway guys, let's go ahead and get started. Alright guys, so to make this work, we're going to need some software. First, we're going to go ahead and grab XPatter. I will leave a link in the description for this website. Uh, you're just going to pick your language, followed by your location. And this is a $10 purchase, just something to keep in mind. Uh, there might be a free trial, there might be other options that are free for people who are worried about that $10, but pretty good software. This guy works on this stuff all the time. I highly recommend supporting him. You're just going to type in your information here and he will send you a link to download this. So once you have this set up on your computer, you've got it installed and you're ready to go. Go ahead and click new in the corner here. You'll be greeted with this obnoxious pink thing. And it's basically asking for an image of the controller that you're trying to set up. So by Googling XPatter image followed by the name of the controller, you can easily find this. And you don't have to actually save this, you can just copy it and paste it in. I'm gonna get rid of this. All right, so make sure your controller is plugged in and ready to go. We're gonna go over the setup. I will show you what I have gone with here and then we'll go ahead and make those settings match in game and you should be good to go. So first we're gonna set up our sticks enable this stick it's going to give you some commands here so we're just gonna hit left on the left stick up on the left stick and then we're gonna click and drag that into position and we're gonna just kinda repeat that process for this here these don't have to be perfect they do need to be in the ballpark though enable the stick up down left and right Go ahead and move that over close enough. Uh, for buttons, we're basically doing everything except for you can see there's an option for triggers. So we're just going to do like A, B, X, Y, left bumper, right bumper, these don't have to be perfect. Uh, hold in the left stick, let's kind of put that in the center, right stick, start, and you can set up select, I usually set it to escape, but since my current profile keeps loading in, it's going to set it to escape and actually close this menu down. So I'm not going to do that here, but when we get in game, that will be something I have set up. So let's go down to triggers, enable, and you just do them both right now, left, right. Okay. So you can see that despite my best efforts, it keeps bringing in my profile that I set up the other night. So I'll quickly go over how to set these up but you should get the, the core of it by the end of this here. So in order to set one of these, you basically just click it. It's going to bring up this keyboard, and you just pick what you want that to be. Uh, keep in mind that the number pad numbers are considered their own entity, so we're, we're definitely going for these. I have this set to left click, so this over here is going to basically emulate a mouse, so I have that set to the left click. Down here you can see these odd arrows and what these are are moving the mouse one direction or the other. So in addition to picking this option for right on the mouse, we're also going to click this, this little wrench here and I recommend ramping this up to at least uh, 60. This is your camera turn speed. 
you can mess around with this and make it perfect, but uh, as of right now, 64 seems okay. I might go a little bit faster than that if I was going to play the game like this all the time. So I'm going to give you a second here to just kind of make these settings match. Feel free to pause the video. All right, now that you have this set up the way that I do, I will see you in game. All right, so now we're in game. Uh, I highly recommend a spot that is nearby some enemies like these guys over here, but also is safe enough that you can set up your keybinds without having to worry about a fight breaking out in the middle that you're obviously going to lose because your keybinds are all wrong. So let's hit escape, go to options, and before we can actually get into the keybinds, there are a few things I would recommend turning on. Firstly, this camera rotation speed, you can adjust that to kind of make the turn speed just a little bit faster if you desire that. Um, coming down here, we're going to have lock ground target at maximum skill range, snap ground target to current uh, target, allow skill retargeting, and melee assist I've had uh, some, some luck with. So... We're going to come down to control options, and again, this is more or less going to be me showing you my settings. You can copy those down, and then when we're done with that, I'll kind of give you a breakdown of how this all comes together. So firstly, we have WASD, but rather than having to turn left and turn right, I have those set to strafe as your right stick is going to be moving the camera around. We have dodge set to 2. Auto run is Q. Jump and swim are both four as they need to be the same thing. Swap weapons is zero. You can leave weapon skill number one blank. Weapon, skill, uh, weapon skills one through five are shift one through four. Your healing skill is three. Utility skills are control one through four. Your profession skills are are 5 through 8 until you get to that fifth one that a few classes have. Uh, just set that to control 5. For the special action key, I have that set to shift Q. I set up nearest enemy. This is a personal preference of mine, and I think it helps with the action camera that you'll be using with the controller. But that is entirely up to you. Most of these settings will remain the same. Toggling on and off the action camera is set to 9. And I believe it's just, yes, all the way down here, interact is set to 1. Just a quick explanation of the action camera. With this toggled on, you're essentially in combat mode and can't have access to your mouse in the same way that you would if you were playing on the PC with regular controls. You get a crosshair in the center of your screen and aiming that crosshair essentially selects the enemy that you want to fight. But if you run into a situation, and I'm sure you will, where you need to get into your inventory, turn off action camera mode so you can get your mouse back and you can easily navigate those menus. All right, guys. So now we got our settings all squared away. I'm going to kind of give you a breakdown of how this works, at least in my head when I drafted this whole thing. We'll bring up a Xbox One controller so you can kind of see what's going on. For this setup, I have A, X, Y, and B to be your default actions, the actions I feel you're going to use more than anything else. So A is jump, X is interact, Y is set to dodge, and B will be your heal skill. I set it up like this because I felt like those were the most common keystrokes that you would be using and converting that over to a controller, interacting and jumping and dodging just seem like basic functions. So with the way this is set up, your trigger keys are going to be your shift and control modifiers, which change what your abilities do, whether or not you have them held in. So your right trigger is your shift modifier, and that will turn your A, X, Y, and B into your weapon skills to through five. Holding down the left trigger is going to give you a control modifier, allowing you to use your utility skills and your elite skill in the same way. Your number one key, or your auto attack, is actually set up to be the left bumper. I did this so that you'd always have access to it, and by holding it down, you can actually just spam that ability. Your D-pad 
without any modifiers is going to be your profession abilities. And because some classes have that fifth ability, by holding in the shift trigger or the right trigger, you'll be able to hit the five or down to hit that fifth ability. Your start button is going to toggle on and off your action camera mode. And I've set this up because when you're in action camera, you can't access your mouse, and so navigating menus and inventory is a bit of a nuisance. The select is set up to be the escape key, only because I think there should be a key that regularly allows you to back out of menus, especially if it's something very simple that you don't need the mouse for. Since the left stick moves your character around, I have the L3 button set to auto run, and I have the R3 button set to be your weapon swap. Holding in your shift trigger, or again, your right trigger, while hitting the L3 button, will be your special action key, and I've set it up this way because I don't think that that is something that's gonna come up as often as a lot of the other functions you're going to need to access. I've set up the right bumper to be target nearest enemy because while action camera is pretty good, sometimes you need the hard targeting in order to land an ability, and while tab is nice, I think nearest enemy for a controller setup makes the most sense. And that, guys, is my controller setup. Uh, that's the best I could come up with after about two days of fiddling around with everything. Obviously, there are some things a few of you are probably going to want to change here, but this just gets you started and kind of helps you figure out what you might want to do. I think that the use of modifiers is essential with as many skills and abilities that Guild Wars 2 has. You can use Alt as a modifier for one of the other triggers if you'd prefer. And you might be able to hotkey a few of the menus you access regularly or whatever you want, really. I haven't even used all of the shift and control modifier spots, so there's still plenty of room there for that. And I think it's pretty obvious, guys, but this is not a controller scheme that allows you to sit on the couch and play Guild Wars 2, unfortunately. I would like that, that would be nice. You're still going to need your keyboard and mouse, or at least your mouse, to navigate menus and some of the UI. But it's a new and interesting way to play Guild Wars 2, especially if you're just doing some map completion or casualing around all of Tyria. For the few friends that I made this for, hopefully you guys see this and it's explanatory enough for you to get started. For the rest of you guys, if you watch this and this sounds appealing to you, let me know the hardest thing that you can complete with this controller scheme, or any controller scheme for that matter. I would love to see some footage of people completing raids with Xbox controllers. Anyway guys, thanks for watching as always, and I'll see you in the next one.